let's just say right now on three, the percentage chance that he at least had a heavy makeout session. Okay. Okay, ready? On three out of a hundred, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Percent. Okay, ready? One, One two, two, three. three. Welcome back to another Dear Shandy Love is Blind recap, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm liking your Luke. <laughs> My Luke. Yeah, that's a good Luke. Luke. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit of housekeeping for any Shandies who uh -huh. heard our Tuesday Bachelor recap, then you've already heard this, but we mentioned it at the top. We are hiring. It's exciting. It's a Our big first day. new hire. It's a big moment for us. We've been around for three and a half years and we've never had a new hire in these years. So yes. we're looking for someone with a specific set of skills. A very particular set of skills. Yes, a very particular set of skills. And so be sure to check out our Instagram. That's Dear Shandy to find out more information and potentially apply. Yay. Yay. All right. Shall we get going? Recapping episodes 10 and 11 of season six of Love is Blind, Andy. Let's do it. So we'll start off nice and easy, as we always do, with Amy and Johnny. Ah, <sighs> they're just a breath of fresh air, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, what's what's wrong here? The best drama they could come up with is condoms <laughs> and this make-believe father who was going to reject him. Yes. No, Amy and Johnny, are they're just so... They go down so easy. You know what they are? They're like a great appetizer at a restaurant where you're like, oh... This bodes well. I feel good about this. Yeah. Great. It's giving you just what you want, but it's not giving you something that's like really, really new and exciting. Yeah. You're not like, ooh, what is yeah. in this? But you're like, mm, I'm satisfied. Yeah. I feel good. It's just like, give me the thing that I want. It's a delicious right down the middle appetizer. Yeah. It's like a high-end fried mozzarella stick. No, they're no? classier than a fried mozzarella stick. Yeah, you're right. You're right. More like a like a ceviche, like a really good ceviche. Uh huh. Or like a tuna tartare. Like it's not like tuna tartare is like ooh tuna tartare. Like you see tuna tartare in lots of menus, right? Yeah. But it's good. And, and it's a good tuna tartare. Yes. It's not like one of those tuna tartares where like it's a restaurant that shouldn't have tuna tartare, no. but they do it because everyone else is doing yeah. it, and you're like, why do you have tuna tartare? Yeah, this no. Is very bad. And you should not order tuna tartare at right. that restaurant. It's a restaurant that should have tuna tartare, and the tuna tartare is very good yes and and that's what they are yeah but you might not remember that tuna tartare in like six months because you've had a lot of other tuna tartares yes and and it was a very good one yes but tuna tartare in it in itself by its own definition is not a super memorable dish yes but Perfect. it's always satisfying yes i am so sold by this analogy okay, good. our shandies are like this isn't working but i am following yeah, we just lost 90 percent of our viewers <laughs> The first scene we see with them is them assembling furniture. And I thought this was actually really cute because I actually mm -hmm. think when a couple can assemble furniture together and turn something like this into a fun activity, then they're going to make it. Yeah, it's a montage activity. Totally. And actually, recently, we assembled our first ever IKEA furniture. This was at my parents' place. It was a media console. And we were up to like two in the morning doing it. And it was fun. We were listening and singing to Huey Lewis. And I had a moment where I was like... We're going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> and in another scene, she tells Johnny she would want to hyphenate her name. And he's like, yeah, go for it. You do you. And so, I mean, there's nothing to speak of here. No. Except actually, they do agree that if they have kids, the kids will take his name. Yeah, there's no discussion about that. No. He's just like, yeah, you can hyphenate your name, but kids' last name is mine. <laughs> I don't know why that's, that's fine. Still I mean, look, assumed. you know what? We're not there yet. No, we're not there as a, yet. As, as a society, we're not to the place yet where it's okay to just say you're going to take the woman's name. Yeah. And you know what? I think there is a very good argument to make that it doesn't make any sense that it's always the man's name. Yeah. But, you that's know, we're not quite there yet. No. We'll get there one day. No. They get back into the birth control thing here, and he says he's done some research on vasectomies and realizes that they're a little more involved than he first thought. I thought this was really endearing. You, did this guy just not have any sex education in his whole life? It kind of feels that way. Andy, you said, what's this guy's beef with condoms yet again? <laughs> it was just so cute, like, how he could just openly admit. He was like, I, 
I I missed this. Like everyone else seems to know this. I, I it fell through the cracks with me. I love it when someone can admit they don't know something, yeah. and it, he thought it was like they just like tie it up. Yeah, it was like a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like they wave wands like whoop. So this comes up in a way that you would think would become a thing, right? They mm. made it seem like this was their big issue. Amy was even seen saying this is our big hurdle. But here she's like, oh yeah, I've I've thought about birth control and I'm comfortable going on it. And so, and that's that. <laughs> the saga is over. Yep. They go glamping in another scene, and this is basically them talking about how good it is. And there's kissing, and they just love each other. They do. And I don't mean it to sound like we are bored by them. No. It's just so easy that it's, you know, this is the way the world works. We're not going to talk about them much because there's nothing to talk about. You know what I feel like in these shows? There's two types of people who watch these shows. Mm-hmm. One wants to see like a train wreck yes all the time yes just constant nascar yes but with no racing just crashing okay and the other person wants to see the love yes that other person unfortunately i think it's like 20 percent of the audience oh i gotta say nothing faces you with your own schadenfreude like watching love is blind yeah like i feel almost uncomfortable about it because I like to think that I'm a good person, that I'm a nice person, that I, I wish the best for people. But nothing makes you sort of like, it It pulls something out of you that you're like not particularly proud of. And that is kind of enjoying the NASCAR crashes why, in Love is Blind. Why do you think horror movies are so popular? Mm. Horror yes. is a genre. It's one of the most popular genres of film. Yeah. I think that certain people, which is like a large chunk of the audience, would rather have a situation where when a couple clearly is good and everyone's like, yeah, they're good. We don't have to worry about them. Some guy just comes along and says, okay, come this way. And they're just (laughs) ushered out and that's it. (laughs) It's like a game show. (laughs) One, goodbye. Okay, so AD and Clay now, we open with AD talking with her mom who I just, oh my God. I'm wow. in love with AD's mother. First of all, she's stunning. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. She looks like her sister, first of all. It's ridiculous. And she's so sharp. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Okay. So first AD reveals the last time she saw Clay was yesterday afternoon. She'd prepared a fun DIY night with him and written down the 25 things she loves most about him. Had prepared this whole date night and he never came home. So we... Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Did he have his Apple watch on? <laughs> Yeah. Should we talk about that? No. Okay. No? Not yet. Okay. So this is sort of building on her mentioning when they met his mother and his sister, how she wishes he would come home just to spend time with her, even if it's sort of out of his way. Apparently he did not come home. He arrives now and her mother asks how he feels about marriage. And he says he sees it as being best friends. And he really feels he was meant to be there with AD. But then he brings up his parents' 24-year marriage and their subsequent divorce and talks about how that split up the household. And I got to say, her mother is so astute. Mm -hmm. She really sees how this is like coloring his train of thought. And she challenges him on downplaying those 24 years. She's like, that's not some big failure. 24 years is a long time for to work with someone. And she says she put a lot into AD. And there comes a point where you say, I want a soulmate. I want my other rib. Wow. I thought that was beautiful. Yeah. She says, AD said something she, her, as her mother yeah. has never heard before, which was, I can follow him. Her mother is so intuitive. She really, yeah. he, he didn't even seem to talk about his parents' divorce that much, but she saw how this was like a way he starts to spiral. And she really, without, I don't know, without wagging her finger at him, she gave him like a pep talk. It felt yeah. very inspirational. Did they give her job title, the mother? Do they talk about what she does? I don't think so. I would put money on therapist. I mean, if she's not, she should consider it. She wow. Is. I'm putting money on okay. it. The whole, the whole ranch. After he leaves, he leaves for a moment. She says, that's a man. He's scared. You can't worry about divorce because you set yourself up for failure. And she says, the sad part is what he's worried about is not even his. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, she really knows the separation between parent and child. Like you can see that in how AD has been raised. Mm-hmm. You know, AD is really her own woman. She's not emulating something that she feels she was told to be. She tells AD, give it your all. If for some reason he doesn't think your all is enough for him, that's not your man. Mm. I mean, she says in Clay's defense, he's doing the work. She says he's worth the fight. There's just so many greatest hits here. Clay returns and her mom says for AD to see him as so good, his parents must have done something right. Wow. 
Yeah. I mean, like that. I feel like this was exactly what he needed. And what AD needed. I feel like she has relied on her mother and I could see why. And yeah. in this moment, you could see her be like, yes, oh, mom. Yes. You got it. Yeah. And she called her Amber. I didn't even know she was talking to. Her. I was like, who's Amber? Yeah. I was like, oh, right. She, yeah, she gave her name early on in the season, but I forgot. she's AD to us. AD. I just thought that this was exactly what Clay needed at this particular point. Yeah. You know, I even said last week, I feel like he talks about his parents' divorce and he sort of goes in this loop of negative talk of like almost this defeatist attitude. Like, this is what I'm destined for because it's how I was raised. And she's like, that's not yours. It's interesting. It's like the stories we tell ourselves. Yes. They're just stories. They're just stories. There's a cute kitchen scene now where they talk wedding colors and they're filling out their wedding certificate application. application? Was that I what it was? So, yeah. And she had to put her, her father- marriage certificate yes. application, not wedding certificate. <laughs> you have officially been wedded. <laughs> So she has to put deceased for her father. And he's like, do you want me to write it for you? And he does it for her because mm. she didn't want to do it. Yeah. I thought that was really sweet. Was, and I, yeah, I mean, I, I know what she's feeling. And also it shows an observantness on his part for him to be like, oh, do you want me to do that? You know, instead of just sitting next to her and being like, okay, well, That's true. It's just or being on his word. phone scrolling. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Disease who? Like somebody might have. Mm. This warps now into him sort of self-sabotaging again. He sort of focuses on how his father cheated seven years into the marriage. I feel like that was to sort of, you know, don't give 24 years of marriage too much credit. He, he right. cheated seven years in. A seven year itch. He says he watched previous Love is Blind seasons. Those men all say the right things. He's not like them. And... He kind of now starts talking about the wedding date. You can tell this wedding date is sort of weighing heavy on him. He's like, does this really need to dictate our relationship? And AD, for her part, amazingly, she's like, okay, we can have a conversation about the yes and the no at the altar, but I'm not interested in being a long-term fiance. Mm. She's so, oh my God, I was like, I love AD. Like, it's endless. But I love how she picked up on what he was saying. Really, it wasn't super clear what he was saying. You know, he's like, does that wedding date, does it need to dictate our relationship? She's like, look. And then she lays down the law. She's like, I bought into this experience. I am not interested in dating just casually after this. Yeah. And how would have someone else handled this who are you talking about? I don't know. Someone else. Who? Someone else. <laughs> Who are you talking about, Andy? Someone else. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? It'd be like World War Three. Can you imagine if Jimmy was like, uh, does that wedding date, does that have to mean everything? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny just thinking it's, about it. It would be bad. Someone else. Clay says that as the man, he usually leads, but he's not good at leading in relationships. He's fearful. Mm. I wanted to give him a hug here because it was so honest. And for a man to admit that he's just fearful. Yeah. And she, she took the baton. She's like, I'm not afraid and I am not afraid to lead this relationship. And he really seems to find relief in this. And I wrote, she is incredible for him. Perfect. And you called her his Xanax. <laughs> I stand by that. She's so calming for him. Yeah. She really understands she him. She diffuses all his anxieties. Yes. She knows how to do it. She doesn't do it with a heavy hand. No. She does it with a gentle coddling hand. Yes. Hands. And, hands. Two hands. <laughs> And do we think that it's too much? I've thought about this, and I would like to think that this is an early stage dynamic uh -huh. where it's a complimenting. Like she's she's complimenting his fears with her calming words. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of it. Yes. Uh, a lot of our commenters have noted this too. Yeah. Like is she is there an imbalance in the relationship? Mm -hmm. I think there is now, but I think with the coaching that's happening. They're going to find that even playing The field. coaching with her therapist mother. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah. We also have to remember that the main scenes were being shown. There's going to be tension yeah. or question marks or uncertainty. And so I would like to think that there are a lot of wonderful moments, a lot of like he's fully on board moments that we're just not being shown. Because it does seem to, to feel a little repetitive at this point with Clay. And I have to imagine that this is not all there is because AD is way too smart to stick around if this is all there was to Clay. It was him like always coming back to his parents' divorce and feeling doubtful. Yeah. But I do think there is something here. Yes. And I think it's it's something that makes me feel like this is an exact 50-50 relationship as far as its chances of succeeding. Oh. 50-50. Okay, I'm going with, I, I, 
I guess I'm a bit of a believer. I, I'm going 70. I'm a believer by saying 50-50, because I think a lot of people don't see it. Oh, with them? Yeah, I don't, I don't. I think people think that Clay is is not right for her. Even when they go sneaker painting? <laughs> I mean, the sneaker painting is pretty solid. Also, there's a wedding dress shopping scene where AD breaks down sobbing when she sees herself in her dress. Two things I wanted to point out about the scene. First was her till death do us part veil, Amazing. which we laughed so hard at when we saw it. But all the ladies were like, oh, they loved it. And then... AD, I'm obsessed with her. She l- let us all in on the fact that she was in on that joke when she went, till death do us part. <laughs> like she fully <laughs> saw the humor in that, that veil. And I also wanted to mention that AD's wedding dress is my favorite. I and agree. it's simplicity. I agree. It fit her so well. And I know fit is something that can be altered, but I just, you know, there was a lot of stuff on a lot of those dresses. And I just thought this was like, Mm. I feel wedding dress is always a less is more thing. It's a more less is more. Well, I guess it's it, an extra, extra less is more. It depends, I guess, how you've envisioned your wedding. I mean, a lot of ladies all their lives think that that's the day where they get to be a princess. And so mm. a princess dress is not typically a less is more dress, Andy. We could be a, you could be a, you know, a toned down princess. A toned down princess. Yeah. Finally, Clay takes her for a date night that he has planned out for her. And at dinner, he says he envisions the future. He imagines two kids. He says he thinks he'll be an amazing father. I thought this was a lovely change of tone for mm-hmm. them and for him in particular. Yeah. You know, he's been so afraid of doing everything wrong. And it, it sort of feels like he's like... Kind of drinking the Kool-Aid. He's in on it. He's ready. Yeah. The question is, is that meant to throw us off the scent and make us think that he is going to say, yes, this is going to work and now it won't? I don't know. All I know is I think, I think that there's going to be a wedding. Yeah. And I think that there's a 50-50 chance it goes a year. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way at all. Yeah. I actually think that that's for this show. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's to, pretty good. To have a marriage that lasts a year for this show, Love is Blind? Yeah. That's a great odds. I just think that there is some lingering doubt in Clay of this relationship and himself in this relationship. Mm. And I think that may come home to roost sometime in the future. 50-50, good odds. You know what would be an amazing twist is if she was the one who said no. Like, I don't want to be with someone who's still kind of wrapped up in their doubts. Yeah, could happen. But I don't even want her to hurt him that way. No, I don't want him to do that. I don't want her to do that. Okay. <laughs> You're protective of Clay. Yeah. You really like Clay. I like it's Clay. Sweet. I think Clay is, the, the name Clay is so appropriate for him because he's just something that is is molding. Oh, Andy. Yeah. He's Clay. Okay. So, Andy, you were comparing relationships that should end but don't end to being zombies. Yeah. Undead. The undead. They walk the earth. Yes. Seeking brains. Did you know, though, that in our skin live senescent cells, which are like zombie cells? I have heard about these. They contribute to skin aging because they infect the cells around them. And if you have fewer senescent cells, your skin is more youthful, fewer age spots, it's more radiant. And that's where one skin comes in. It's science. The science of skin. Care. Yes. And I mean, this stuff is really cool. This is one skin. They have developed the OS1 peptide that reduces the number of senescent cells by up to 50%. And so in doing so, they reverse your skin's biological age. And in a clinical study, wrinkles were diminished in 87% of users. I have been using this stuff myself for a little over a month now, and I've got to say I am impressed. I do like how it plays well with my other products. I don't have to completely overhaul my entire skincare regimen. And I love that it was founded by female scientists. And I love how One Skin is about not only improving how our skin looks, but improving the biology of our skin so it's more resilient to aging. And I'll tell you, you are a stickler when it comes to skincare. I am. And I I was just like, oh, we got a skincare product coming in. We say no to almost all skincare things that come across the Dear Shandy desk. And I was impressed by, like you said, the science. They combine tissue engineering with cutting edge longevity science to create this stuff and I also love that they just have very few products you know that's always a thing you know when we say go to the restaurant they've got like three different cuisines and like a hundred things to choose from I don't believe that the right R&D is going into all of those 
products. I've said this before and I'll say it again. The smaller the menu, the better the restaurant. Yes. So One Skin is more than just skin care. It's about skin longevity, targeting the root causes of aging to help you look and feel your best at any age. Get started today by saving 15% with code Shandy at oneskin.co. That's 15% off with code Shandy at oneskin.co. After you purchase, support our show and tell them we sent you. It's time to expect more from your skincare routine. Invest in the health of your skin with One Skin. Okay, so speaking of couples that don't make it, a year or not even close. Let's talk about Laura and Jeremy. Mm-hmm. He doesn't deserve to go by Jeremy anymore. He's Jeremy now. Oh, 100% <laughs> Jeremy. We first see him chatting with his mother. He says, I got myself into a little bit of trouble. He claims nothing inappropriate happened with Sarah Ann. He claims she was just going to get an Uber and he offered to give her a ride since she was only eight minutes away. They just chatted some more there. And his mother, I love, I love how she's not even on his side. No, not even close. Yeah, he doesn't even have his mother. That's no, it. Nobody. That really says a lot, doesn't yeah. it? She's like, you're lucky it wasn't me. She says she would have sat up, stayed awake, waiting for him. Oh, dear. And the gist, though, the bit of intel we get from his mother is that he really did love Laura. She's like, I heard the way you spoke about her. And I guess, you know, he doesn't normally speak that way. So we're supposed to believe that at least a part of him was sincere. Do we think a part of him has been sincere? I think a part of Jeremy. I think Jeremy doesn't really know himself, if I'm honest. Yeah. He acts out too much based on uh, protecting his ego that it, it's hard, hard to know what he even wants or what he loves or he's just always in it for himself. I'm just going to say right now that early in the pods, I said I wasn't into Jeremy. You know- you're okay. I'm, I'm, I'm Are just, you coming to collect your I, I told am, you so? <laughs> I believe I am. You did. You were not into Jeremy. No. God, Andy, such a good read on people. Yeah. I mean, for me, he was an easy one. Okay. You called him self involved. Yes. Didactic. Yes. Okay. So now we're at the lakeside party. And chatting with the women, Laura reveals that after she left and moved out, she never heard one word from him. And she says she thinks he never loved her. He was fake all along. And of course, now he arrives to this so-called party. And in his confessional, Jeremy, sorry, Jeremy says she jumps down his throat and spins everything he says in the wrong way. She's making him out to be the bad guy. I mean, boo hoo. Hmm. I feel like he is not apologetic enough for the specific crime he committed. He seems to think, oh, because nothing happened. I didn't sleep with Sarah Ann. It was just this innocent thing. Like that's, of course, like it's better that he didn't do that, but it's also not entirely the point. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. That too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're taking his word for it. And I gotta say, we've learned by now that Jeremy is a scary good liar. Yeah. Scary good. The fact that he was caught lying about his location thing, when apparently, you want to talk about the Apple Watch? Apparently he had his Apple Watch on. But he left his phone in the car, yes, in the parking he lot. he thought he was covering his tracks. I still find the whole thing a little suspect. I've, if he left the thing in his car in the parking lot, but yet he drove her home? Well, let's do this. Let's just say right now, on three, the percentage chance that he at least had a heavy makeout session. Okay. Okay, ready? On three. Out of 100, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What percent? Okay, ready? One, One two, two, three, three 90. <laughs> okay, so 95 average. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't buy it. No. Because I trust him about as far as I could throw him, and I feel the same way about Sarah Ann. Like, I don't trust that she wouldn't also cover for him. But also the truth is very powerful. When you know you're acting truthfully, Mm -hmm. you don't do things like leave your cell phone in a car. 100%. He's setting up an alibi. So what he's like, I don't even want her to know that I went to go talk to her. That's not the way you think. No. It's not like when somebody's about to murder someone in a state that has the death penalty, they're like, you know, maybe I shouldn't murder this person because in this state, you know, I might get executed. Yeah. That's not how it works. No. He committed the crime the second he left the phone in the car. Yes, he was playing. You're right. He was creating an alibi. Why do you do that? Yeah. If you have no intention. He, yeah. like, he had bad intentions. He did. Obviously. A very interesting quick scene here. Jeremy tells Jimmy and Johnny that his texts to Laura were met with, quote, all nasty effing answers. He doesn't want to be treated so poorly. Why fight for that relationship? Jimmy is like, I think you're both hard headed. 
I mean, when Jimmy, Jimmy has become the knight in shining armor on this show, I gotta say. But interesting how when Trevor arrives, Jeremy goes to hug Trevor and Jimmy says to Johnny, I don't want to be involved with the conversation talking to Jeremy. Wow. And Johnny says, I don't either. Yeah. Wow, that is telling. Yeah, the good guys. They don't want to be dirty. They don't want to play in the in the mud with this pig. They don't. I think it's so telling that these guys who lived with Jeremy for weeks, they know they know the underbelly of this guy. They're like, mm, Yeah. That's bad juju. Well, like I'll be happy to see him. Like at the party, I'll show happiness in yeah. seeing him, but I'm not gonna be sullied by his association. It says so much. Yeah. It makes me like him even less. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, so now Sarah Ann arrives and we finally see Laura and Jeremy chatting away from the group. He is coming at her for her responses to him. He basically says that she's been really mean. She calls him a con artist. And what's so interesting is that for the exact thing he was complaining about. So in his in his confessional, he was like, she flips what I say around to make me sound like the bad guy. She's accusing him of the same thing. And He's like trying to give her a hard time for not giving him her address so that he could send flowers. Can we talk about that? Sending flowers. What? What? He's looking for a shortcut. Right, right, right. It's it's an easy shortcut. You're right. It's just like, oh, I'll fix this. Just give me your address. Yeah. I'll go to 1-800-Flowers. Spend 40 bucks and we're good. Yeah. Give me your address. Yeah, exactly. I'll spend some money and I'll let that do the talking for me. Yeah. Only a coward does that. And also, if you have to ask for the address, you've ruined the surprise. Oh, if, you can, if you can figure <laughs> out her address, then maybe it works. True. And even him talking about it, it almost felt like he was trying to pat himself on the back on camera, being like, I was trying to send her flowers. I was just yeah. trying to get her address. Yeah. She was Come such on. a bitch. Yeah, I banged this girl, but who cares? I was going to send yeah, her flowers. Yeah, like, see, look, I was trying to send flowers. It feels like he's like waving a flag, like, good guy, good guy. How about actions? over words yeah. he asks did he not own what he did and she's like three days later and somehow he's surprised that it's not met with joy and happiness i mean i gotta say he really met his match because i know laura we talked last week about how she's really hard-edged she's real. she can be very abrasive and i can see her needing to be with a very specific type of person but it's so satisfying when someone as kind of underhanded as jeremy is sort of put in his place by someone like her oh yeah because she does not give him an inch she's like nope no. nope he's probably gotten away with that kind of stuff a million times yes those lies have worked yes that gaslighty behavior has worked that's why he's so good at it he's yeah. so comfortable with it yeah. he's well versed he's a con man not that great a con man i wouldn't hire him for my con <laughs> i'd interview him though You'd interview him? He'd make, he'd make it to like the second or third round of interviews, but then I'd be like, nah, you're going to screw something up. Oh, I need a better con yeah, than Yeah, like this. your Apple Watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything will look good on your resume, but this Apple Watch thing, <laughs> just can't look past that. So now we'll have a quick detour to Sarah Ann, because Sarah mm. Ann's at the party and she has a chat with AD. And just when I thought I couldn't love AD more, oh my goodness, this conversation, AD is pretty much like, you asking a man, is the door open, when you know he's fully engaged to DM him, She's like, did Jeremy leave that door open for you? And Sarah Ann, oh my goodness, she can talk. Mm -hmm. She's, she gives a very long-winded answer, sort of defending her reasons. She claims Jeremy did when he broke up with her. The language was in a way that made her think that the door was open. But AD forces her to answer a, like a distilled down question. She's like, okay, but when you reached out to him, did you know that he was still engaged? And she still tries to dance around it until finally she's like, okay, yes, I knew. And it's really so telling that even here, she can't take responsibility. I know AD was coming on kind of hard here, but I loved it. You know, she yeah, really forced her. She wouldn't her, let go. Yes, she wouldn't let her dance out of answering. Something about this conversation reminded me of early on Matthew when they were in the pods. And, you know, there was sort of a montage of him giving the ladies questions based on what number they picked and there was a scene with sarah ann and she was so long-winded that he just left the room yeah <laughs> this brought me back to that moment because sarah ann is a she talker talks. she talks and she doesn't say a lot no it's incredible it's actually impressive how many words are uttered and how little message i'm getting yeah. it was sort of hard to keep notes actually because i was like what'd she say i was like oh i think the gist is this yeah. she's like freestyling yeah <laughs> and the gist frankly is often that she's just not sorry. Yeah. That's the gist is like she has all these defenses, all these justifications as to why she did what she did. It's always just her being at the end like, I'm not sorry. And what's totally. so funny is had Sarah Ann just been like, I know I did a crappy thing. 
Yeah. I know it was wrong. I just was really heartbroken. I just really felt he made the wrong decision. I really think it's meant to uh, to be us. Like I truly feel that way. I actually think AD would be like, "Well, I think you did a crappy thing, but I respect you for That's exactly owning what it. she would have done. Yes. Yeah. But AD in her confessional instead is like, "I think it's really weird that she doesn't think she did anything wrong." And right. I completely agree. And now Jeremy and Sarah Ann chat and Sarah Ann's like, everyone can go F themselves. Her intentions weren't to hurt anybody. And even that, like your intention, you did. You did hurt somebody. I mean, in the end, she's really angry at herself, but she doesn't even realize it. Oh, you think so? No, I think that oftentimes people who have a very lofty feeling about themselves uh -huh. will do something that they know is wrong. Yeah. And they'll be angry at themselves. They're like, you shouldn't have done that. Uh -huh. But because they're protecting their ego... They'll project that anger out towards everyone else. You know who she sounds like? Jeremy. Exactly. They're twins in that sense. I mean, he does the exact same thing. When he does something crappy, he it's just anger yeah. that he sends out into the world. And he's kicking and screaming. There's no way that he's in the wrong. We yeah. see that Sarah Ann is the exact same way. Yeah. And also that smirk, you know, that sort of oh. smile when they're like, oh. They ha, both ha, have ha. that smirk. Yeah. They ha, 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 ha. It's so funny to think that I would do something wrong. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she basically goes by the way on, that's the most annoying thing in the world yes there's nothing more annoying than that you know who did that is sydney in the bachelor not to bring oh to go to smirk. another <laughs> horizontal universe but yeah. the smirk the, the smile like hmm that smug smile mm -hmm. when everyone knows that you're wrong but yeah. you somehow are laughing at the concept of you being wrong yes nothing more annoying sarah ann basically goes on a monologue to herself here jeremy's sitting there and she's just basically talking to herself about how she's not that person her feelings are valid she was destroyed she talks a lot yet the conclusion like i said is i'm she even says it i'm not sorry i'm not sorry it's like, okay, so what was the point of all this? And, and the amazing thing is, if she had done this right, she could have had her cake and eat it too. I agree. She could have been, people are like, wow, you know what? That's a re that's a redeemed character. Yes. And she gets Jeremy. Yeah, good for her. Yeah. Wow, what a prize. <laughs> and that's it. She walks off into the sunset. I agree. I think if she had played this differently, she really could have come out as a more sympathetic character and possibly a secondary romantic lead. Yeah. You, you know? know what people like in this country? Or in the world what? in general. Humans like an endearing villain. Yes. They love an endearing villain. Yes. Yeah. I do too, to be honest. Oh, totally. Yeah. Because I want complicated. I want a character. I want someone who's who's got depth. Mm -hmm. But I also want someone who I can believe in. Jeremy now says that he made the wrong decision in the pods. They should have done this together. And he's like, you want to go jet skiing? And she's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Like... I don't know why I expected more from either of them, but can you imagine anything more disrespectful? What I find interesting is that for someone or two people who love to look good. I know. In front of everybody. <laughs> it's so true. And then they're like, okay, we might as well just be full on villains here. And there was one point on the jet skis where Jeremy was like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> it was like such an evil cackle. Right. And I got to say, like, I know, like, Jeremy, I wasn't surprised by this, but Sarah Ann, she had just been crying about having been perceived in this way. She's like, I'm not that girl. I'm not that blah, blah, blah. She's all upset. She's feeling sorry for herself. And then he's like, you want to go jet skiing? She's like, OK. Yeah. It's like, which what do you want? Which of the two things do you want? You cannot have both. I really, really could not stand that they did this. I thought it was they should just leave. Leave the party. You want to get out of here? Easily could have done it. Even then, there was still redemption to be had yes. at the very last second. He could have been like, listen, let's face it. We both screwed this up. Yeah. Let's go. Let's be respectful. Let's go get a coffee somewhere. Yes, let's right talk off into this. the sunset. And then they could go straight back to our house and bang. <laughs> and no one knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. It almost made me wonder if people were contractually obliged to stay at this lakeside property for a full eight hours or something, because it made no sense to me why... They would stay. Why Laura would stay. Oh, and Laura in her confessional is crying. Yeah. And look, for Laura to be crying in her confessional, yeah. Laura, you yeah. think she wants, like She's she is to so tough. Yeah, That must have hurt to see. This was so despicable, in my yeah. opinion. Production loved it. They had the whole crew out on that jet ski. <laughs> 
I mean, yeah. They probably were like, Jeremy, you want to ask her on a jet ski? Hey, guys, you want to go jet skiing? Yeah, they took the whole production crew. They just moved over to the jet ski area. I really hope this is the last we see of them. I am just done. I I think you will. I don't think you're going to see them again. You know why? Because they're not even appealing villains. No, they're not. You're right. No. Like, meanwhile, Chelsea... I have like this yeah. up and down oh, relationship. With Chelsea's watching got Chelsea. staying power. Oh, she really does. Oh yeah. I, Chelsea is the best. I mean, she's such great TV. Yeah, she's like that Red Hawk cheese that that you like. <laughs> I come home, the whole house smells like farts. Yeah, it that's is, the kind of thing you want more of. Yeah, you don't like yourself for wanting it. No, but that's you what do I mean about it. the Schadenfreude. I'm like, yeah. what does this say about me? However, you're right, Sarah Ann and Jeremy. I'm like, oh, go away. Yeah, it's Stop not taking enough. up minutes of my precious TV time. Go away. It's weak. It's weak villainy. Yeah. It's tepid. It's lukewarm. It's like it's like when you get a, a, a food that's like doesn't have enough flavor in it. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't want more of this. I don't ever want this yeah, again. The opposite of Red Hawk. Yeah. What's the opposite of Red Hawk? I'm trying to think of something super unsatisfying. Overcooked, totally unsalted and unpeppered scrambled eggs. Mm, I think we can do better than that. Ooh, unsalted tomato juice. Ooh. Yeah. That's not that bad, is it? Oh, it, it's. have you ever had unsalted tomato juice? <laughs> I should give it a try. <laughs> okay. I trust you. Okay, so finally, Andy, our favorite couple, Chelsea and no. Jimmy. We first see them meeting his parents and sister. It was funny when his mother promptly asks about having kids. She's like, oh, well, you're young. And Chelsea's like, well, I'm 30. And his mom's <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> A highlight is Chelsea saying they communicate so well. They don't even have fights, just conversations. He is super effusive here, goes on about how much he loves her. She's exactly what he's been looking for. And Chelsea is basking in this glow. Mm. And overall, this goes super swimmingly. His mother in particular seems to love her. And later that night now, we learn, I guess, off camera that there was some sort of fight uh before they went to meet his parents or maybe the night before he apparently showered and left to go to a birthday party and she's like you didn't even invite me and he's like yes i did and so apparently he was gone for one and a half hours she didn't challenge him on that she said you're right you were not gone very long and i guess wherever he went he went to a friend's birthday party and i suppose Mackenzie was there Mackenzie, (laughs) andy you were like who's Mackenzie?" and i was like the one who pees in pools (laughs) I feel like Mackenzie's a troublemaker. Yeah. Mackenzie is the name of a troublemaker. Totally. If you're given the name Mackenzie, you've got to live up to yeah, it. Yeah, your parents were troublemakers. <laughs> By naming you Mackenzie. Yeah, it's a troublemaking name. Chelsea says that they were all like, why is he out and you're not with him? She really seems to care what people think. You notice that this comes up a lot. Everyone said this. How do you think that makes me feel? Yeah, she's very concerned about how she looks. He says he knew she didn't want to go out and she admits that's true. And he says, then why are you hammering me about it? And she says she doesn't want to be with someone who wants to go out. (laughs) This turns into her accusing him of lying in the pods, misrepresenting his lifestyle. She says that he said he doesn't like to go out. And he was like, I don't. I went out for one and a half hours to get one drink with friends. And she's like, but I don't know if that's something I want to deal with. <laughs> I, 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 is there, I don't even know what to say. She was so drunk. She so was drunk. so drunk and not a good drunk. But even if you're that drunk, like, what is she talking about? <laughs> Seriously, what you is she talking you about? You can't blame that on alcohol. I mean, you can blame the fact that she said it on alcohol, but mm-hmm. you can't blame the fact that she feels that on alcohol. Interesting point. My point is there's some really deep rooted problems there. Yeah, I This agree. is not good. She is one of those people that craves fights. Like yeah. she, when she wants a fight, she wants a fight. And... We've pointed this out before, but she will not let up until either you completely grovel and say you are hard headed or you did everything wrong. You love her so much. You completely grovel. Even then she will continue, like I said, creating moles for you to whack before she finally gives in. Or on the polar opposite side, you have to turn it back on her and be like, you're not being fair to me. That's what he did in the Dominican Republic. And finally she was like, oh, I love you. It's she, terrible. You it's, have to, it, drop the hammer or cower. It's so unhealthy. She doesn't understand how to speak the language of relationship. No. Like if she was in France, she couldn't say, you know, manger. She couldn't even get there. <laughs> 
Okay, like 101. Yeah. Like level 1A. It's like food in mouth. It is Comida. interesting. <laughs> It's interesting how when she talks about her past relationships, she's been treated so poorly. People have cheated on her and all this stuff. And of course, you wouldn't wish that on anybody. But I also feel like she never includes the part where she, and look, people are going to be like, you, there's no justifying cheating. There's no justifying being treated poorly. All the things. Yes. Agreed. However, I feel like when she shares that information, she's not including how she's contributed to whatever dynamic she had in these toxic relationships. Because I got to tell you, watching Chelsea on Love is Blind in this relationship with Jimmy, what I see is toxic yeah. from her. And toxic without any learning. You can tell that any chance she's had to learn, there's been the opposite. Yeah. She shuns learning. That's the worst part. Yeah. She doesn't. You're right. She's in a loop. It's, yes. it's a loop and she needs to break it and she's not making any effort. Yes. She says she's trying to dive into this and he doesn't give two shits. And Jimmy's like, you think I don't care about you because I go out and have one drink. And she was like, that's not a person I want to be with. She says she loves him. She wants to be around him. He's not giving her much. And he's like, I've been away from you for a total of like three and a half hours. <laughs> I believe it. Jimmy. Too. I mean, he's so great. <laughs> I, pe- I am so into Jimmy now. Honestly, people are coming after Jimmy. No, I don't I- think they're coming after him anymore. Okay, but they were. In the beginning. Okay, but 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 I have felt from the beginning that Jimmy is actually into her. Mm-hmm. I believe that he is. I agree. For better or worse, he is. And he's doing too much yeah. to preserve this relationship. Andy, you said you've almost lost respect for him based on how he's still tolerating this. Yes. It I- almost makes you like him less that he ends up taking her back after this particular fight. Yes. She says, do you not understand the situation we're in? Very condescending tone here. And I love how he's like, I do not understand the situation we're in. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, she brings up, I suppose, what's really bothering her. Actually, no, it's not quite what's really bothering her. The Jessica thing's what's bothering her, but that comes later. So this is the precursor to what's really bothering her. And that is that he has female friends, even though she met two of them and thought they were lovely and she was really nice to them and they were really nice to her. This bothers her. Everything, like I said before, is in code. It's exhausting. It's like, what? Just get to the point. What is actually bothering you? What are you upset about? And he says, if you sign up with me, you sign up with my friends too. And he asks if she's asking him to take a step back from those friendships. And she's like, well, I have, but apparently you haven't been listening. You know what this is? This is malicious insecurity. Yes. It's malevolent. It is because it's making him doubt himself too. She's like, I have been saying you haven't been listening. It's on you. You haven't been listening to me, but she hasn't come out and said it. And he even said, he was like, you have not come out and said that it's, it becomes like semantics at every turn. You say, you saying that you're not comfortable with me having female friends should not automatically equal. You want me to disconnect from my female friends. And she's acting like they're the same. And he's like, no, they're not. Her problems are now becoming his problems. Yes. And can we talk about what a red flag it is when someone wants to start controlling who you hang out with platonically? There's nothing worse than that. You know, it's like when someone doesn't drink for whatever reason, Mm -hmm. maybe they have a problem with drinking or they don't like it or they just don't drink. Yeah. And they're dating someone who does drink, Uh not with a problem, just drinks, likes to drink once Uh, in a while. Okay. And they're like, you can't drink anymore. Because I don't drink. Yeah. You're not allowed to drink. Yeah. You're not allowed to have a glass of wine. Yeah. I, I don't drink. I'm suddenly, You're being disrespectful to me because I don't drink. You're not ever allowed to enjoy but even something. But that, I, gotta, I have an issue with that too because Chelsea is the biggest hypocrite. I know that in this specific case, okay, maybe she doesn't have the same number of platonic male friends who she hangs out with. But for example, how she talks to Trevor when she sees him. If Jimmy said some things about Jessica that Chelsea says about and to Trevor, she would lose it. Of course, a total double standard. 100% every time. She'll take the attention. She'll bask in it. Yes. But she won't let him even have a meaningful friendship with a woman. Yes. Who's been his friend for a long time. So Jimmy makes her say it. He's like, do you want me to take a step back? And she's like, of course I do. And he says, okay, I'm not willing to take a step back. And then he walks away. It was so great. She's left there looking very sad. And Andy, you said, is she upset with herself or the situation? We couldn't tell whether that look of sadness was, I did it again. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I messed this up. Or he's such an asshole. I think it's the situation. I don't think she's gotten to the point where she realizes it's her. Actually, what she does next would suggest that she still thinks he's being the asshole because he goes to brush his teeth. She follows him to the bathroom. Ooh, and- this is like a horror movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> she comes at him for not being willing to take a step back. Unbelievable. From his long term female you friendships. You would think most people, 95% of people would be like, oh, I went too far with that. Mm-hmm. Like she should have gone. I thought what she was going to do right there was, was be apologize. like, I'm really sorry. I That was too far. I agree. I thought that was what was coming. But she escalated. Yes. She doubled down while he was trying to brush his teeth. And actually, it, it went even worse. I would say she tripled down. She tripled down. Because- and, and by the way, he shouldn't have been brushing his teeth. He should have been out that door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was an unacceptable conversation. Yes. Period. Yeah. And she now, I think, does something completely unforgivable, which is she reveals something he shared with her off camera, which is that he has slept with one of those female friends. Yeah. And why does that female friend now have to have all of America know yes. that she slept with Jimmy? Yes. On top of all the other much worse things about what she's accusing him of. And actually his reaction to this made me, this was the moment I was like, oh, wow, I really like Jimmy. Yeah. Because this is the first time we see him get as angry as we feel he should. And that's because he's like, I put this friend in a compromising position, putting her on TV. I told you that off camera. He's very upset that she betrayed It's not even about himself. He's more upset about her doing that to his friend. And by the way, he told her that he had slept with her. Yes. Well, there was also that. He was like, I told you that in confidence so that you would trust me so I would let you in on everything, not so that you could use it against me and her. I I gotta be honest, I'm disgusted. She's like, you're not single anymore. (laughs) I mean, this is cartoonish at this point. It is. I I feel sorry for her, but I also feel such anger towards her behavior. What percentage do we think is the alcohol here? Well, it's a hundred percent the alcohol for why she's behaving so horribly. Yeah, yeah. But I only think it's like twenty percent the alcohol for why she's expressing these feelings. As, as you always say, Eddie, in vino veritas. Yeah, not just me. And now, finally, the truth comes out. She believes that Jess was out that night, Jessica, and that Jimmy was actually hanging out with Jessica. And his reaction here, I think, says it all. Because he starts to smile. He thinks it's hilarious. He's like, I've never even met her. And then she starts accusing him of having said that Jessica looks like a Kardashian at the gym. And he was like, I didn't say that. Jeremy, can we talk about what a troublemaker Jeremy is? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Apparently, Jeremy said that. And it's so obvious he's telling the truth because he finds it laughable. So this devolves into her accusing him of not loving her and then him being hurt that she thinks he doesn't love her. And she's like, I don't want to be with someone who X, Y, Z. And he's like, are you saying then you don't want to be with me? And she's like, maybe I am. And then they decide to end things. And then they start playing this sad ballad. And Andy, you were like, they should be playing Viking music. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it did feel very victorious. We were so happy. Finally. Yes. This is what should happen. It is. They do not belong together. I think it's obvious. Yes. But I'm also a little concerned that they are going to end up together. Me too. <laughs> I think all of America is. Yeah. It's reminding me of season four. What was her name? And Kwame. And another Chelsea. Oh my God. Was her name Chelsea? Yeah. Chelsea, the name is cursed. Chelsea. Is it a Chelsea thing? It might be a Chelsea thing. I know one Chelsea. One Chelsea. I, I dated her briefly, but we, we don't. And what was she like? Talking How did she fight? <laughs> I think she was a little Chelsea-ish. <laughs> really? Okay, let, let's just assume that Chelsea's are not all Chelsea. <laughs> I think that's, we don't want to go down that road. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, all season long, we were shown all these scenes and you and I were like, oh, they're terrible together. They shouldn't end up together. And I do not think we were alone in thinking that. But then, you know, they both said yes. And, and look, I'm not saying that their relationship isn't great now. I'm not saying that, but I think that a lot of people do not know how to end a relationship. Yes. And it just goes on. Yes. It's like a zombie. (laughs) The relationship is just in a living dead state. Yeah. You can't kill it and it's not alive. (laughs) After a beat, Chelsea moseys over and she's like, please don't leave. (sighs) This is what it takes. It takes him Being angry at her or leaving. That's what it takes. And he says, you overstepped my boundaries. And Andy, you said the worst relationships are the ones where a fight like this stems from what was supposed to be a nice conversation. Yes. It's so true. Every time we see them together, and even later after they do their ice carving thing, they're having just a conversation like in at sunset. And I was on edge watching them. Yeah. Because I was like, this is supposed to be loving, but you never know what's going to happen. And if you're on edge, imagine how on edge Jimmy is. Mm. And for the rest of his life, always, he's never going to know. He's always walking on eggshells. Yeah. 
Well, that's the precedent set here. Yes. So now it's the. It's ne- like a horror movie. <laughs> it's like in the horror movie where it's like the the times when the worst thing happens is when everything seems great. Yeah. You know where this was first done was Friday the Thirteenth. First the done. First, this I'm telling you, the first time they did this. Oh, people are going to correct been, you. I, possibly, maybe before, <laughs> but I, I have a pretty good knowledge of the horror genre. Okay. Friday the Thirteenth, the first movie. Uh huh. At the end of the movie, well, the ostensible end of the movie, she's on a lake. It's beautiful, soft focus, beautiful music playing. Yeah. And she's just enjoying. She has like one hand in the water. Oh she's no, just, one hand in the water. Oh, we never won one hand oh. in the water. And they, the camera's like slowly zooming in on this beautiful scene. And I remember looking at this, and I'm like. This is this is nice. It's a nice end to it. It just cleans the palate. Like that was a really upsetting movie. Yeah. Now it's going to be nice. And out of the water comes this this decomposed horrible Jason to uh-huh. drag her down Ooh. to her death. That's the end of the movie. Well, then she wakes up screaming in a hospital. <laughs> It's a dream. <laughs> so I guess it wasn't that bad. But yeah, that was the first time, and it, that's been copied. Every horror movie does that. Yeah. Now. Well, like, oh, I mean, everything's fine now. Ah! Well, it works. Contrast, right? Contrast. The up yeah. and down. You got to set up the scare. Yes. You got to set, you can't, if you know the scare's coming, all it's going to be is a jump scare. Totally. You got to not know. Yeah. How did we get into that? Oh, how the worst relationships are the ones where a fight stems from a nice conversation like this. Yeah. You never know when that monster is going to come jump out of the water like the and drag you down. Decompose living dead monster. Yeah. <laughs> so okay next time we see them she comes into the house and they have this chat where he says he was sure she was going to be his wife but now he doesn't want to get married anymore and she's like so you're saying no <laughs> oh my lord <laughs> somehow i found this apology scene almost as irksome as the actual fight scene you know i think he's very reasonable here he's like i felt betrayed by you and it'll hurt to feel like that isn't landing with you at all and i gotta say i have to agree with this because chelsea never looks at things from his perspective Mm -hmm. she's always thinking about her feelings she never thinks about how her actions affect him and i gotta say this is the case with some women in straight relationships i've noticed this there are a lot of women it's like what can he do for me How can he make me feel loved? A good partner, a good male partner is sensitive enough to be hurt by what you say to him. Mm. And I don't think she's learned that lesson yet. Men just don't show it as much. Yes. Yeah, but they need to be loved and loved properly too. Maybe more. She apologizes, says her delivery was bad. She knows she was horrible. But for him to throw in the towel just over this little hiccup... She says when things get tough, she needs to know he's not going to just walk away from her. So even this, this apology turns into an accusation on him. When things get tough. Uh Uh-huh. No. When you make things that aren't tough, yes. tough, yes. you're he, not going to walk away. So I can just get away carte blanche yes. with bad behavior and totally. you're not going to walk away. Yeah. Chelsea says she felt more in love with him yesterday than she ever was. She says, I felt so much from you yesterday. And yet she started that fight. She felt more love than ever and then ha- then proceeds to start the worst fight they ever have. She asks what she can do to change his mind so he could think this is a yes. And he says she can't cross that line again. And she says, same for you. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. She seems to forget that she's the one apologizing here. And Why is he tone, tolerating I, this? What is he? What is what is what, this? I mean, I have to assume all the great scenes between them are not being shown. She must be absolutely amazing on everything she does off camera. Apparently. He says he forgives her. He wants to try. He loves her. We both agreed, Andy. He's way too patient. Andy, you said, I can't believe he's ever broken up with anyone. I don't think he has. I think he's been dumped and he's never broken up with someone. That is a skill people need to learn. You know what? I've, I've, I've learned this from boxing. Often announcers will talk about a boxer who's never lost and mm-hmm. they'll say he doesn't know how to lose. And I used to think that was kind of like a sort of like a corny trope. Yeah. But then I thought about it over the years. And I was like, that makes sense. Yes. They've never done the thing. They don't know how to do it. Yes. They have to lose to understand how to lose. Yes. And sometimes a boxer loses and they're never the same. Never. But it was too much. Yeah. It was too much. They couldn't take it. Like who it was are you not telling in the vocabulary. Me? Who were you telling me about the other day where that happened to someone? Oh, Tyson. When Tyson lost to Buster Douglas, he was never the same. Okay. Ever. But never again. You- he won some fights, but he was never the same fighter. Okay. He was yeah. shook up. 
And had he lost any fights before that loss? I think he lost one, like in the Olympic trials, he lost a fight, a okay. close fight, but okay. he didn't lose, lose. Uh-huh. He like barely lost. Okay. And, and that guy that he lost to Henry Tillman, he destroyed him in the pros. Okay. Like a few years later. All right. Buster Douglas. Yeah. But great fight. Buster Douglas that night was, was as good as any boxer they've ever seen in my life. Oh. Looked like Muhammad Ali. Okay. Yeah. But he's, he's one of those fighters who also doesn't know how to be consistent. Okay. Everyone cares about this. Everyone's like, tell us more, Andy. Tell us more about boxing while we're trying to watch your Love is Blind recap. It's so cute. Whenever boxing comes up, you, you kind of like, you're like ready to go. <laughs> yeah, go Wrong ahead. venue. <laughs> And Chelsea, I've got to say, she does this annoying thing. It really grinds my gears where she'll respond to something that's quite loving and I think meant to clear things up. Like yeah, he'll, be, he'll, he'll be like, but I, but I really love you. And she'll be like, you too. She'll say it with this tone that says, that's what I'm saying. Like you that, finally figured it yes, out. Yes, yeah. That's I've what been I've, right all along. Yes. It's, it's somehow still sidesteps, really taking responsibility, really just apologizing. She's like, that's what I'm saying. Don't you get it? That's what I've been saying all this time. Oh, you God, too. So <laughs> finally, this ends with a kiss and an I love you. Andy, you said Jimmy, you animal. <laughs> In his confessional, he says that she's hard not to forgive. And he says he'll put his blood, sweat, and tears into this relationship as long as he knows she's in it. I gotta say, it should not take blood, sweat, and tears. It should take blood, sweat, and tears if you literally are going through a war. Yeah. It should not take blood, sweat, and tears in the first three weeks of a relationship. No. It's always incredible to me when anyone thinks that a good relationship takes that that level that level of challenge no if any that's your indicator yes that's your indicator that it's wrong everything falls away Uh uh-huh it's like you had all these weights on you yes and now all the weights are off in your whole life Uh uh-huh it's the opposite of blood sweat and tears yes it's I tried to think of the opposite of blood sweat and tears. That's tough. <laughs> that is tough. I challenge anyone to think of that. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Uh, what's the opposite of? What's the opposite of blood? There's no, <laughs> there's no opposite of blood. Okay. <laughs> it should be blood. easy. It should be easy. Yeah, yeah. It's easy. Relationships are easy. Yes. Yes, there's compromise. Down uh-huh. the road, 10 years in, sure, you're going to hit some bumps, yeah. but you get through it. Uh-huh. The first three weeks, the first yeah. year, the first two years, come on. Blood, sweat, and tears. Okay, so now it's the lakeside party. Jessica arrives. We get that satisfying shot of Jimmy seeing her in person for the first time, but we got to say, he is very well behaved oh at this gosh. party overall. He gives her what she calls a church hug. <laughs> and we were really upset that Chelsea and Jimmy made up. Andy, you said this party could have been the best thing ever for him. <laughs> Andy, you said if he's smart, he should have engaged in slightly too long, slightly too physical close conversation with Jessica, saying nothing inappropriate. And if Chelsea reacted poorly, he hits two birds with one stone. <laughs> Jimmy's too good. He's too good. He's too good. He's That's too something good. Jeremy would do. not too. conniving. No. He has no M.O. He just is. Jimmy just is. In his chat with Jessica, he says that meeting the family was the easiest part. So having Chelsea meet his family. And I love this. Jessica says, oh, that's what you were most afraid of. She remembers this detail. Yes. He says, but then they had their biggest fight. And she says, I want you to be good to her. Andy, you said that she's threading the needle. Mm -hmm. They recap their relationship now. He says he never dated anyone like her, but he felt pressured with her. And she says that she knows he had no bad intentions. That was the best he could do at that time. Uh, She says her husband is going to validate her without her having to ask. She says he never did just say how he felt about her and not in a fishing way. She just sort of says it plainly. And he says now that she's the smartest person he's ever met. She's witty and quick on her feet. And I got to say, I agree. We were talking last night about... About how smart Jessica is. She really is. Yep. She is very sharp. Yes, because Jessica, you know, if we're looking at her from like a reality TV package, what she looks like, you know, she clearly could go on, I don't know, The Bachelor or something, right? Yeah. From a conventional beauty standards perspective. But how interesting that she chooses love is blind. She knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing. Wow. She made this season fantastic, and she actually played a very small role in it. You know what she is? She's a businesswoman. <laughs> yeah. Do we think she went on for fame? You know what? If she did, she did it with elegance. 
Yeah, and I guess, I don't fault her at all. Well, here's the thing though: is I actually think she really fell for Jimmy. Like I think she I, actually did want a relationship out of it. And you know, you can make the case like, oh, you know, a lot of guys she meets like like her because of the way she looks. Mm-hmm. So she wants to meet a guy who likes her for her personality. Yeah, totally reasonable. I don't know if Love Is Blind is the first place you go as a human being to <laughs> find someone to meet you for your personality. I think there's other ways to try to do that uh-huh. in the real world. Yes. I think she had some MO here. Yeah. And that's fine. Oh, who I, doesn't? No. How many people really go on reality TV shows solely, solely because they want to find love? Since Instagram became something you could monetize, never. Yeah. In never. my opinion. Yeah. You can you can I mean talk about hitting two birds with one stone. You can yes. Oh, sorry, feeding two birds with one scone. Thank you. <laughs> How dare you? They now bring up the EpiPen thing. And she says she was gassing herself way too much. She was the one who was about to fall out and need a medic. I wrote, wow, she's good. Mm -hmm. We agreed this is a person with a lifetime of street smarts. Never crossed the line. Was really shockingly vulnerable with him. Little things like she said she rehearsed the the handshake she was going to do. Just really told him, you know, how much she cried. It was really hard for her. But yet at the same time, she wasn't like, hey, is the door open? Are you changing your mind? Yeah. Uh, Here's my number, just in case. Not even a wink. Nothing. No. She really, I thought, stayed in her lane. She did not try to complicate things. This is how it's done. Mm Mm-hmm. Professional level. This is how we do it. Don't. 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 I don't know the rest of that. No, me neither. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so now Trevor and Chelsea chat. She tells him to his face that he's her type. He asks yet again if the orders were switched and he'd gone first, would things have turned out differently? She says he was her number one until the last second. It's been hard not to think of him sometimes. Overall, I personally think this conversation was distinctly flirtier yes. than Jimmy and Jessica. And there was a very cute moment where Jimmy comes over and hugs Trevor. Yeah. Okay, we had to quickly talk about the Trevor rumors. Apparently, he had a serious girlfriend throughout the entire filming process. Amazing. What is in it for him to do that? I do not understand. No idea. I Does don't... he think he has such star power that that's it? All he needs to do is go on TV and he's going to have a big career as a TV Instagram person? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand why you would do this. It's so easy for him to be outed, which he has been. Yeah. And then he looks terrible. Terrible. I just don't get it. Like, if you really feel you want to have this experience, this once in a lifetime, whatever, okay, just break up with your girlfriend to do it. You know, apparently, I guess his girlfriend knew he was doing it. They were sort of in on it or something. I don't know. It's like Bonnie and Clyde of reality (laughs) TV. I don't understand. Like, what is the thought process there? It's so weak and it's so shameful. Like, all the shame he has to deal with now. Every sincere mannerism or, like, heartfelt speech is all BS. Yeah. He just looks like exactly the opposite of what we thought he was. Well, yeah, during this whole conversation, normally I would be like, oh, Trevor, he's so likable. And now I was like... No. You actor. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to watch actors on this show. That's the whole point of reality TV. <sighs> what a fall from grace. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah. All the men this season. Oof, Isn't rough it amazing scene. how Jimmy is the he's, star now? We all Messiah. love Jimmy. So Jimmy and Chelsea, there's a weird moment at this party where she jokes that Amy and Johnny are the strongest couple and he sort of seems to be offended at this. I couldn't tell whether this was a joke or not. No, you know what? It wasn't a joke. I think what he's doing is he's mimicking her behavior. Ah. Yeah, he's learned from the master. He's like, I'm going to make a fight out of everything. (laughs) Anyway, at a later date, they go ice carving. Afterwards, he compliments her eyes and she glows. I mean, I have never seen anyone respond to compliments about physical appearance the way Chelsea does. She loves it. Yeah, she lit up. She was like, my eyes. (laughs) And every time they talk now, even though this was a nice moment, I was like, "Uh," on edge. And now she goes wedding dress shopping with the ladies. Lots of crying and gushing here. How funny is this? Yeah. It's always so much crying. It's so much crying. It's just a dress. Yeah. I mean, I know it has a lot of importance. Yeah. But there's so much crying. Yeah, women, you know, they're told... A lot of women, especially in this country, are told their whole lives that it's the most important day of their life. You know, it's a lot of pressure. It's always so funny to me. There's so much crying in these wedding dress things. I got to say the last part of this episode was very sleepy to me. And I don't want to make it sound like I don't believe in these couples or I don't want to see the happy moments, but it felt very imbalanced. Like episode 10 was so chock full of so much tension and so much excitement. And this is what I mean about the schadenfreude. It's like, why am I not as 
entertained by women crying over their wedding dresses. But it did feel a little like, okay. But that's what you expect. Well, you know what it was? It was the calm before the undead monster in the lake. Oh, is this it? Yes. Are they setting up the lake scene? They're 100% setting it up. And I got to say, though, the cliffhanger at the end of this episode is very... Yeah, what is that? Was that really the best they can do? So Chelsea and Jimmy go to Carowinds. They have the whole place to themselves. He wins her a stuffed animal at one of the carnival games. Turns out this is their last pre-wedding date. And at dinner, he asks if they're going to get married. He hasn't got a grasp of where she's at. I find this sort of shocking. Like, how yeah. do you not have... Her? Like, they talked earlier in the same episode about being into this, talking about marriage. But I guess, you, I don't know. It's a different conversation when you talk about being at the altar and saying yes or no. I don't know. I guess so. But what's this cliffhanger? So she's basically like, where he asks, where does she stand? Yeah, and she's and like... And she pauses. Mm -hmm. And well, the next thing she's going to say is, I'm so ready. Yes. And that's a cliffhanger. Yeah. Like, how much money is on, I'm so ready for this? That's this, what she's going to say. This that, is very weak. We got cheated. Yeah, I was not into this. No. It was boring. I felt like a cliffhanger wasn't necessary. I agree. Yeah. We made it through 11 episodes. Uh -huh. Like, they're not going to watch the 12th because there wasn't a cliffhanger? It's so true. If there is not a natural cliffhanger, they should just not create one out of nothing. Okay, so... Nah, this was not my favorite episode. Episode no. 10 was very exciting. But even that, you know, the build up with the Jessica and Jimmy stuff. I, maybe I'm the sicko who kind of wishes there had been more of an explosion. You're the only sicko. Was Please. I the only sicko? Come on, Shandies. Am I the only bad person here? Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. My schadenfreude. Yeah. I shouldn't be proud of that. No, but it's human. I feel it more on this show than with The Bachelor. Yeah. Like with The Bachelor, I really partly am in it for the love story. You know, yeah. yeah, some drama's entertaining, but I really am like, oh, what a beautiful love story. And with this, I, like I am partly in it for the love story, but I'm also like, oh, let's see what happens. Like, well, ooh. The Bachelor doesn't suffer fools. Like if you really have a lot of problems, yeah. you're getting eliminated. Like in Love is Blind, bad behavior kind of keeps going for a while. Well, the only person who has to suffer the fool is the other person in that relationship, in this case, Jimmy. Right. But you're right. If there's one bachelor and Chelsea is one contestant, she would not make no, it to not getting away with finals. That. No. no, she would get sent home 100%. Right. Yeah. And I mean, when you've got someone like Jimmy, who's as patient as he is. Well, you get to see the actual relationship and I dare say bad relationship yeah. blossoming. So you get to really get invested in that dynamic. Uh -huh. And then if someone's doing something just terrible, mm -hmm. you want that to be punished. Yes. In The Bachelor, you don't have time for that. No. The relationships are, they're barely anything. It's like they go on a helicopter ride. Yeah. You don't have time to really feel that like, oh, that stop ire. doing that stuff. Yeah. Oh, Chelsea. Yeah. Red yeah. Hawk cheese. Do you mm. think anyone actually knows what we're talking about? 100%. Cheese lovers might. Yeah. Yeah. That's a it's a high end. That's like that's like an expert cheese lovers cheese. It's a very farmy cheese. Mm. I love it. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right, Andy, that's a good place to wrap when we're talking about cheese. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us Apple and Spotify. Podcast ratings and reviews. Tell your friends and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. Mm.